metaphysical cliff looming. There was plenty of talk today by members of both political parties on reaching a deal to avoid spending cuts and tax hikes. Some economists say the so-called cliff could plunge the country back into recession. Tom Price said absolutely no, sir, when asked if he agreed with House Speaker John Bonner. On Face the Nation, Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina said, Republicans will not vote for higher taxes. We will generate revenue from eliminating deductions and loopholes. Democratic Senator Patty Murray of Washington replied that to solve this problem, the wealthiest Americans have to pay their fair share. If the Republicans will not agree with that, we will reach a point at the end of this year where all the tax cuts expire and we will start over next year. The sticking point to solve the standoff is what the president calls a balanced approach of spending cuts and increased revenues. Obama said he is open to new ideas. If there is one thing the religious right agrees on after the election, it's that they were defeated. Not only did Obama win re-election, but gay marriage won in all four states where it was on the ballot. And the two most outspoken senatorial candidates, one of whom was heavily funded by religious right groups were very defeated. It's when the conversation turned to why a majority of voters rejected those positions, and what to do about it, that things get messier. Bernie. Thank you. American Family Association rabble rouser, Brian Fisher, chalked it up to Romney's Mormonism, and the fact that he is not a genuine conservative. But, the emerging conventional wisdom in social conservative circles is less dramatic. The conservative message failed because the Republican Party failed to appeal to a broad enough base of voters. Like hundreds of mainstream conservative pundits, the focus is suddenly on minority voters. A seismic cultural shift is shaking the ground beneath their coalition, and percent this deep structural change cannot simply be addressed with little more than a recalibrated message, Republicans. Wake up. In case you missed it, we are in the infancy of a new American revolution. It began with the tweet heard round the world by Donald Trump on election night. This election is a total sham, and a travesty. We are not a democracy, posted Trump on Twitter. Such treachery shall not stand. So Trump sounded a call to action. Let's fight like hell and stop this great and disgusting injustice, Trump tweeted. Trump couched his call for an uprising on the imagined fact that Republican candidate Mitt Romney lost while getting more overall votes than Obama, which wasn't true. The enemy Trump is referring to must include the 95% of black voters and 71% of Hispanic voters who proved America is not a democracy by voting against the billionaire's preferred candidate. NBC's Brian Williams called out Donald Trump for being an arrogant blowhard during NBC's election coverage. Trump has driven well past the last exit to relevance and veered into something closer to irresponsible, said Mr. Brian Williams. Trump has now deleted some of the election night's tirade, including tweets calling for revolution and incorrectly saying that Obama had lost the popular vote. In a recent tweet, 
Trump now says the election was the Republicans to win, but that Mr. Romney had not connected with the people. In the wake of last week's presidential election, thousands of Americans have signed petitions seeking permission for their states to peacefully secede from the United States. The petitions were filed on We the People, a government website. States of citizens file and include Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. Oddly enough, folks from Georgia have filed twice. The petitions are short and to the point. For example, a petition from the volunteer state. So reads, peacefully grant the state of Tennessee to withdraw from the United States of America. Texas is the most signatures, with more than 23,000. Should the petitions garner 25,000 signatures in a month, they will require an official response from the Obama administration.